made a friend with the community, and now there's Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, Andy Kanazic. Would you lead us in the point of view? Keep going on. Please join me in pledging to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Kinesi. Uh Public announcements, a reminder, not that we need one, but let's do one anyway. And now it's this weekend, these wild west days. This is the chance for all of us to be cowboy. And uh, I, I happened to come across, I was going through some boxes in my closet, and because uh, uh, I'm getting ready to reach one of those milestone decade pages, which tells me, oh my God, where did the time go? And here's a picture of me when I was four, sitting on a pink pony with a cowboy on. I was four years old. It seems like yesterday. However, coming up this weekend, I can now uh, read down that outfit and get into all, all the things that are going on. And that's probably more than you need to know. Call the public there. Lester Thank you. My name is Lester Reckman. I've been with K3 for I have a vintage to the town. I bought here when it was county. We became a city, but we wanted to stay out of the grass for Phoenix. And I'm not sure that it's happening, but nevertheless, I'm here. Because I used to sit up where you guys sat. And I was novice. So I went to the League of City in town, and I asked for instruction. And there was a nice gentleman down there that told me what we could do and what we could do to keep ourselves out of liabilities. Mm -hmm. And then he said, as a council person, you're only mandated to do five things. And those are, number one, collect money. Number two, spend money. Keep the safety and welfare of our community. Number three, save money. It's very important. Number four, to provide a justice system, and I said a justice system, to protect our people and enforce our laws, and they are zoning code. That's our zoning laws. And the other laws is we can't we want to but it's not mandated. And the fifth one is safe roads. And by the way, you think of spending sixty million dollars first strike K Creek Road because I can hardly see it, my guy. Now, I'm here for a reason. I feel that you people, or the community, is making a mistake by selectively enforcing your zoning codes. And I'll give you a couple for them quickly. I went out on a road today, and I seen a portion of our desert desecrated. I looked for a building code. I see four or five people staking out something, and I couldn't see a building permit. By rights, but what has happened to that property, according to your zoning code, should be red tag right now. But I understand, as I read in the Torah news, and it could never be anything but the truth, but I'm, uh, that that individual is a fine gentleman. Is trying to do something for himself, for the people, and some children, and do some nice things. Got permission from the city of Camp Creek to do that. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you are breaking your own rules. I know many people who wanted to build, and the first thing that happened is you had to have a building envelope. And before you had that building envelope, somebody came out and staked all the cactus and all the trees, and they either had a name or a number, and they had to be replaced or done something to it, but not put in a dumpster and carry it off. Now, I'm not blaming that gentleman because he wanted to do a nice thing with somebody or for the general public. I believe the person who gave him permission to do that, and I'd like to know who did that. Uh, I'd like to know if anyone who had been to that property. 
Mayor, have you been to that property and see what's happening? Lester, since you set up here, you know I cannot reply. Okay, all right, then I won't ask you questions, but what I'll ask you to do is the first thing you do in the morning is look at your zoning codes and see what the restrictions there are. And then I would take that and go to your officer and I would have him red tag that property and stop all construction right now. When you start violating, for instance, the roadhouse came to you and got a building from it to put in some garage doors. Yes, sir, you need to wind us up. You're over the three minutes. Well, anyhow, I'm over three minutes. And you should be happy that I have. But do your job. Take care of our life. And you create a very serious problem for everybody in this room by allowing that man, giving permission to break our zoning codes and you need to do something about it because you're there to protect our safety and our property. Thank you. Good boss. Thank you. Ms. Perry? Betsy Glass. Ms. Glass. Very much. Did you guys really do that? You put me after Lester. I mean, <laughs> he advertised on the stone tablets in front of the Buffalo Chip for his art stuff, and I wrote tickets on parchment paper. So you take the two oldest guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, members of council. Mayor, Vice Mayor, my name is Larry Wendt. I'm on the Buffalo Chip Saloon, 6855 East Cape Creek, uh, 6811 East Cape Creek, and I live at 6855 East Cape Creek uh, up behind it. I'm here tonight um, to do a couple of things. I want to introduce to you folks uh, some people that have come to work with me over the past six months, and I'll do that real quickly, and then I'll uh, end up my comments. Uh, Marvin Dixon, you want to stand up? Uh, Marvin Dixon cooked for 50 years, 54 years <coughs> over at Temple Peak Patio. Uh, he now cooks at the Buffalo Chip. He's not very good at it. He uh, only did about 11 million steaks over there. We're hoping he does another uh, 11 million in cave break. So I want to introduce uh, Big Mar. I want to introduce Louise. Uh, Louise worked at Pinnacle Peak Patio, Riata Pass, Greasewood Flats. It, you're starting to get the idea they're all out of business now, but <laughs> Luis has been with us and uh, does a fine job uh, working with us. Scott Browning was the manager at uh, uh, three, two of those uh, facilities. He was a short timer there. 36 years. 36 <laughs> years uh, that he spent uh, with those restaurants. And then uh, uh, Dell Skinner, uh, we hired, uh, how many years did he have? 32. 32 years. Uh, and then uh, Jordan King, come on up. If any of you guys watch Food Channel and you uh, know the Jaylicious taco food truck out of uh, uh, fame on the Food Channel, this is uh, Jordan King, Jaylish, and she uh, works with us now. And so uh, I just wanted you guys to meet these folks and then... Uh, just, just kind of reaffirm that unfortunately all of these uh, people are here with me now because the, the businesses that they were at for 54 years, 36 years, are out of business. Um, their council was not nearly as receptive and keen to the needs of business and, and the western flavor of this town as you folks are. So I wanted to say thank you uh, to all of you, I wanted to say that, uh, and I don't see Matt from Walmart here. I think you guys all know, and we probably spend a couple thousand dollars a week now, the Buffalo Chip and Walmart, for everything from big screen TVs to things we run out of. I love tractor supply. We've got antique tractors, and uh, we support these big businesses. But just remember that people come to Cave Creek to see the West, and the little businesses, the mom and pop operations, even though we're not mom and pop anymore. 121 people work at the Buffalo Chip now. And uh, 
So I want to thank all of you and just hope you'll keep that always in your mind. We're not the most vocal bunch. We're not out here every council meeting whining or complaining generally. And uh, <laughs> what, generally, and, uh, we just wanted to uh, let you guys know uh, we stand behind you. You stand behind the businesses, and this will be a great town. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Second. This is not responsive question, but I knew Taste of Cave Creek and I met some of these fellas and I will tell you, I was kind of thinking Buffalo Chip is a place to go drink. They got the best brisket and that I've tasted in my life. Uh, so I think he's doing a really good job. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone uh, wish to speak on the call of the public? We're going to move forward. Uh Lester, if you would be so kind. What's that? Uh, you don't need to speak again. I'd love to, but you don't have to. I know. You know, you got control. Would you, would you leave the address of the property you were describing with the town clerk? You know, really? so I don't know the address, don't you? You're the mayor. <laughs> I, I know this is going to come as a surprise. You don't know the address. You don't know what's going on out there? Uh, you haven't no. looked? The, the desert is no. being destroyed? I, I can't. You uh, don't know where it's at? I can engender discussion, but you do. No, you're... I don't know the address. I'm not mayor or I'm not on the council. I don't represent these people. You do. You should take some concern and you should go out there yes, and you yes, should sir. look. No, no, you asked me so to just, I, you I, I, I ask you to leave the directions or the address. I don't know the address, person. but you don't either. I do. What is the address? Okay, thank you. Thank I can't, you. I, I, you can't give me I know the parcel number. Okay. I know where oh, it is. I know people in the audience that know the address. Okay, you, you do counsel Thank you, Lester. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. I advise you Thank look you. and see if you have the nerve. Thank you for your I have the nerve. Okay, go off tickets. It's a disgrace. Okay. Town manager, anything? <coughs> a couple few items, sir. Um, last week, uh, Mayor and Council, last week we started grading some of the gravel roads. That will continue for the next couple weeks. We'll do that. Uh, I know we had a discussion about gateway horses, where they get, so we actually restate the new location closer up Cape Peak Road to Walmart, who state is going out there for the utilities, and hopefully I can put that in next week. Uh, the town engineer selection process, uh, at the uh, committee had two panelists, had some interviews with them, they get a site, and we're gonna make an offer to one of them tomorrow. Um, being a program, met with the CCMAA, uh, finalizing an MOA, we're going to work on that, give it to the town council, give it to the town attorney for review and any suggestions or recommendations they want to make. Um, one of the councilors asked about how many hollow, about us having uh, an appraisal bill on that. It's part of their conservation process. I'm going to bring that to council to vote um, to, to do that. And lastly, I know let's talk about road striping. Mm -hmm. And a number of people have spoken about road striping. We have the bike lane project happening. It starts, I believe, in the first, second, uh, second week of November. It's going to take a little bit of time to a slurry seal. Then we were going to strike the roads. If we strike the roads now, I have to do it again, or we'll have to do it again and pay double for it. So that's why it's, it's been delayed. And um, hopefully to have that done, that whole project done somewhere toward the end of December, early ja January on Cape Creek. It's really an eight, uh, eight dot project. As soon as that done, we'll have all strike. Can I ask a question there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The portion of Cape Creek Road, or the, the, the portion of the road that I'm most concerned with, I don't think is affected by the bike lane construction. It is the portion of Cave Creek Road where there is zero striping and has been zero striping for a very long time. Is there any reason that that can't no. happen? If there is a section. Next week? No, if there is a section, um, it, we do have a Maricopa County. We have an open contract with them. We saw them, this is the area we went down, they signed the truck. I, I, I don't get to pick the day because they do them. But there is a section that is to be striped that is now part of the bike lane project on the strike the town the assistant town engineer to strike it. You can't miss it. I was gonna say you can't miss it, you can miss it because you can't see it. So but look, look for striping that's not there, and that's where I'm talking about. I, I thought all of Cape Creek Road was included in the bike lane project, but if it's not, then I'll 
If it's not part of the project, I'll have you check it as soon as possible. Appreciate it. Okay, additional question of the town manager, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I, Councilman Nasser and I were to be involved in part of the yeah. committee when talking about the yeah. going forward and drafting a new contract with respect yeah. to the banner program. Um, somehow we didn't get included in that last uh, meeting somehow, so. Uh, and I understand that our town council was not present either. Correct. And and I believe those were explicit directions of town council. So uh, I would suggest that you set another meeting so that we can okay. discuss this further. I will. Uh, and at a minimum, I would certainly like a copy of uh, whatever draft you've put together of your understanding, uh, because we need more than an understanding. We had an understanding the first time, and that was part of the directive that it didn't have uh, the sufficient specificity that it should have, and the council didn't approve it. Uh, didn't have a chance to look at it to approve it for form. So would you please make sure I get that and let's, yeah. let's put that back on the table. You don't have to draft, we have all the bullet points and all the points that you talked about. Yes, I think. Yeah, I'd like to see that. No, right? folks, up. We got left out of the loop. I honestly thought the EO went up to you, folks. Not a big deal. I know. They have to fix it. Right. Well, it may not be a deal, Mr. Ashley. It is a deal. I, I have one other question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the appraisal, the property appraisal that you're yeah. talking about. That's not in the process of being done? Uh, we had a discussion with the Bill Council. They have another vendor. I have to put out the bid that there's another vendor that could do the work for a better price. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so my uh, instruction was I'm not sure where the council wants to go with both the 4,000 acres and the Omnia Hollow because it's, it's all conservation land. Either way, I still have to, by law, get an appraisal. So the discussion was to bring it to council so everyone knows that's what we're doing because they don't have comfort to watching on that. So to pursue that particular purchase, but to make that step, I want the council to say, yeah, go ahead and do that. And that's what I'm asking. All right. I'm not sure what the yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't my understanding. Uh, that's fine. And I don't know question. what the cost is for appraisal will I be honest. I don't know what the cost of appraisal is gonna be. I think it's a, well actually didn't change. We don't think I don't have to see change. Mm -hmm. I think that's a follow up. Is, is this the, the, the property that's down that's right next to the uh, uh, part of Cape Creek uh, spur grounds? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a like a 30 acre. acre piece in the hollow. Okay. That's it. Yeah, if we're going to do something with that, then we need to have that done sooner rather than later if we're going to. Okay, I'm trying for about some more. We're, we're going to move on to consent. And I think we're adding tonight day of the approval of the October 9th, 2015. Regular council meeting minutes. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes clearly have it. Thank you, council. <clears throat> Father, the first of five general agenda items tonight. As everyone in the room knows, Cape Creek, uh, as a community, is a part of something much bigger, and that is uh, Maricopa County. And for the past so many years, uh, the man who has represented the county, uh, Andy Kanasik has also represented Cape Creek very well as we've gone through uh, uh, challenges and at times in need of the county for their uh, input and guidance. And uh, of course, we work with Maricopa County in the management of Spur Cross, and Maricopa County was very much involved uh, to the tune of seven and a half million dollars in the purchase of uh, Spur Cross. So we have a very long and storied history. Uh, with the county and most of that with uh, Supervisor Kanasik, who is here this evening, not to talk about that so much, but uh, to talk about something exciting, a bicycle ride that is coming up. Mr. Supervisor, welcome to Cape Creek again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, it, you mentioned a little bit of history. It, it really was one of the first things that I was able to work on when I joined the Board of Supervisors. Uh, seems like uh, many lifetimes ago um, but uh, one of the first things I got to work on was the Spur Cross Ranch acquisition and it was really a probably the example I use more often uh, where people always want to point to governments not working together and uh, doing things that don't make sense but that was one that I used the example of, of uh, governments that, that really did come together to do something that I think is you know, it was a profoundly impactful on this community and the, really the preservation of, uh, of some of the most beautiful parts of the Sonoran Desert that exists. So um, about that same time, I, I think we, we had uh, 
had the idea that we've got one of the most beautiful park systems in the country, in the world, perhaps, um, the largest in terms of acres in the United States, uh, the largest municipal park system, is here in Maricopa County. And one of the things that, that really screamed out and looking at it is this beautiful series of parks around the valley. And wouldn't it be neat if we could connect it together with a, with a, a trail system that, uh, you know, to the extent we could get out ahead of development and establish these trails so that as development, if and when it occurs and it comes there, uh, we were there first, and the, the developers and, and other, other I guess, urban users would uh, have to contend, I say much in the same way that uh, we, you don't have any railroads here, but uh, anytime you try and uh, get something across a railroad, uh, you, 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 you can appreciate, uh, uh, I guess, the trail users don't want to be crossing highways. So we were there first, and it'd be great to someday to have that all the way around the valley and a uh, very limited uh, impact. I want people to go from trail from park to park. Uh, one of the first segments uh, that we were able to complete was across the north part of the valley here, uh, really from uh, Lake Pleasant Park to Fur Cross and Cape Creek Recreation Areas. And we, um, and, and as you know, um, all of our parks, all of the Maricopa County parks, are paid for about 90% of our of our uh, operation and maintenance is, is paid for by the people that use them. This trail won't have gate, you know, pay gates or anything else. So we we worked with our Maricopa Parks and Trails Foundation to uh, come up with ways to, to find the funding um, going forward to, to really maintain the, uh, this this trail system. One of the one of the uh, most important things is to put uh, make make it better known and and better used and, uh, and and that's what brings me here tonight is that the Maricopa Trail as you can see it's up on the uh, up on the screen now uh, we, we want to showcase that trail uh, with with a, a, a bicycle race mountain bike race that someday we'll, we'll view it as a, a we hope it becomes a stage race that takes place over many days and will go all the way around the county uh, which is a little bit over 300 miles if we were able to, or when we're able to, to do that. But this is the, the first, uh, the inaugural race, I think, on the Maricopa Trail. Uh, we've got a, a, a date that we've, we've really kind of finessed in there on, on these very busy uh, January calendars. Uh, we think we have a good, uh, a, a good weekend for it. January 23rd is a Saturday. It will be that first race, and it will begin at Lake Pleasant. Um, up at the, the four-lane boat ramp over on the, the west side of the lake. Uh, it'll, it'll kind of traverse the, the trail through the, through the lake and, and across the, the, the areas across Peoria and Phoenix, across I-17, through the Cave Creek Park and Spur Cross Recreation Areas. And our finish line for the inaugural race is right here in downtown Cave Creek. And we've been working with, with Bambi Miller and uh, and Aaron Stein has been at, at the meetings, uh, at our organizational meetings. Uh, there's a lot of people, I didn't know there were so many moving parts on putting a bike race together. And I wondered where all the good lawyers went and they're up here, I think Jerry and, Jerry and Bill, but uh, that was probably more of an inside joke. But uh, <laughs> we have plenty of good lawyers downtown, but sometimes they get in the way of <laughs> what we're trying to do. So. A lot of moving parts on this. We've, we've had, a, a, I think, a great outpouring of, of support from the corporate uh, 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 citizens in, in the Valley. APS has stepped up to be a, our premier sponsor with a very generous donation, um, DMB. And, and, and as you can see, I, I think on one of the handouts that we'll give you, uh, you'll see the corporate sponsors to date and the city of Peoria. Uh, where the, the race will begin uh, has been very generous in providing some, some uh, transportation to get bike riders, uh, cyclists back to their cars or uh, back at Lake Pleasant after the, after the party. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about the race. We'll have some more follow-up with, with your staff on some things that we're, we're hoping to accomplish or need to ask the town. Sounds like maybe our highway department under contract might be doing some of it. Um, but it's, it's there's a lot of uh, 
still a lot of things to, to do between now and January, but I, I, I definitely want to invite all of you personally to, to the, at least to the finish line. Um, and I don't know if there are any mountain bikers here, but it should be a great race. Steve, are you a mountain bike or councilman? I, I ride horses. Okay. I ride the roads. <laughs> you can do traffic control, maybe. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 I would like to offer uh, myself for any questions or if you, if you need any more information, um, I can get it for you if I don't have it tonight. But it's, uh, I'm very excited that it's, it's going to, the, the first uh, race is actually going to end. I know that you, that time of year, you got a lot going on here and it's probably, I hope you don't see it as just one more uh, event uh, uh, that, that comes to a great town in January, but we're very happy that we don't think there could be a better finish line uh, for this first race and something that's going to grow into, as I tell tell our sponsors, this is going to be bigger than Phoenix Open someday when we finish this out. Yeah. So, you know, I will follow up with, with any, any real asks. Uh, some of them get pretty technical. We need maybe a road graded uh, shoulder of the road here or there, but I don't want to bore you with all that detail, but uh, I'm very happy to be here and happy to answer your questions if, if you have them. Happy to have you here. <coughs> How long has it uh, taken you, Mr. Supervisor, to bring this into reality? About probably about 15 years, and I think it's one of your residents here, Terry Smith, was one of our. I don't even know if Terry's. He's not here, is he? Um, I mean, it literally was a. It really was a, a pulling together everybody that my colleagues and I could identify as, as a p the key people in the communities all the way around this, this trail system that that came down, sat with, these were early versions of GIS systems at the county highway department. So we sat there and, you know, drew this thing out and identified existing linear real estate, such as power lines and a lot, an awful lot of his county flood control projects uh, that, that were, you know, were finding additional purposes for. Um, so it, 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 it were probably 30 people around the valley that, that just, you know, horseback riders, mountain bikers, hikers that, that just sat at endless hours in the highway department with us drawing this out on the map. So it was a, it really was one of those things that was a, a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into it. It's cost very little money, believe it or not, as, as in government we're always shocked at how expensive things are. Uh, as, as government projects go, this, this was uh, probably one of the highest values uh, that, that I've ever been involved with for the, you know, the bang for the buck. And I, I hope the legacy to the, you know, the people that, that use it for decades and centuries to come. Uh, I, I think this is a, this is a, you know, great project that, uh, again, um, we're going to, we're very proud of it in Maricopa County and it wouldn't have happened without, really without uh, Cave Creek and a lot of other dedicated people around the, around the county. And, I want, you know, this is, I think it's becoming what, that was a long question, long answer to your, about 15 years. <laughs> yeah, it's 52 miles this first, first race will be. So. Yeah, it looks like a massive undertaking and, and thank you and, and everyone else who's, who's worked on it. I think especially relevant here with the bike lanes finally going in, uh, in Cave Creek and Carefree. Um, you seem to have things pretty well in hand, but if there's if there's anything that I personally can do to help, I'd be happy to, and, and I'm sure the council would as well. Thank, Thank you, Council. I live in the northeast corner of uh, Cave Creek Regional Park, and I can just tell you that if there's not a week that goes by that my wife and I are out there riding and look around and go, you know, this this is the difference between our it's this open space and this place that it could be the 1700s still. Uh, and it, it, it's what enriches this community, and you should be proud of, of preserving that. And, and because the trails are always maintained, you're opening new trail, the quartz trail is new. Now you have a new connector trail. Uh, it's really a wonderful service to the people of this county. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Anything else? Uh, yes, Councilman Nesser? Well, I'd like to echo what's been said, and it looks from the map like there's significant elevation changes. It is 52 miles, so. Yeah, I don't know if we have that that slide up there, but it, it and there is quite a bit. Some of the uh, I'm not a mountain biker. We've I, got I'm, it in the handout, so it's up and down. 
Yeah, there is quite an elevation change. And I think it's going to be, a, what I'm told is to be a nice combination of, you know, be some very technically challenging segments and then some where the people can make some miles up pretty fast. So Our yeah. staff person, Bambi, is very good at what she does. The, um, where, where exactly in Deep Creek does it finish? Um, somewhere right right here by the, the flat tire bike shop. And, oh, my and, uh, <laughs> Somehow I figured that out. <laughs> yeah. The uh, uh, about some of the, the not really knowing anything about biking, how much time would this take? I don't know if that's a Kim question or Mr. Supervisor. I really don't know. I think we're we're estimating the four hundred people in, in the racing, and then so say five hundred people total in the event with their friends and family to come to hang out. How long would it take to do this? I would estimate four and a half hours. And there will be a, a, a fun ride, kind of a family fun ride. And as I understand, most of it is generally downhill. And, um, <laughs> it, it winds up right down town here, too. So not, not a steep downhill, but it's just uh, you know, kind of spur across the uh, road. And, so, uh, are and you that's a seven mile. Are you going to do this race? Mr. I, I might be able to. I, I can do the seven mile fun ride. I, 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 <laughs> but who knows? I, I did the. Uh, I did offer uh, uh, if, if uh, APS wanted to double their uh, donation, <laughs> I would. Uh, I would do it for a thousand dollars a mile. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it really, it has been. We've had a lot of, of donors. Four Peaks Brewing is going to donate the beer. So Jerry, we might need liquor license help uh, for the nonprofit. Is that a yes? You got it. Your time? You got it. <laughs> okay. um, it really has been a, a, for me a lot of fun. I over the years, you know, you Mayor, you've known all my colleagues. Uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs on the on our board of supervisors and uh, and our challenges. But I always, you know, this, this trail project I think has been a kind of a point of, of refuge for my colleagues um, over the years and we've never lost funding even in the bad times we've, we've, we've had to make some dramatic cuts uh, but we've always kept uh, kept enough money and actually bought quite a bit of right away in the in the downtime for for good value but I, I think it's because my colleagues have always gotten a little peace of mind uh, uh, re regained or recaptured from some of the other things that you all get to, to to deal with, you know very well. But it's not all. It's not all fun and games. Doing what you're doing. And so for us, this has been our our little respite. So come on out, have fun. Tell all your friends. We do have a. I, I've got a few more uh, brochures here. They'll they'll be showing up uh, uh, more and more. Um, we do have a website, and it's the uh, just pricklypedal.com. Uh, and, and, you can register. You can, even if you don't ride, maybe register and you get the T-shirt. But it's not a good race if it's going to be. A yes, race. I think I can do that. I mean, Tour de France, being involved in the very first one. <laughs> is, is, is that there a media partner? We do have a Reister. Uh, Reister Company is, is our media partner, and they've set up our websites and and, uh, and they've done a great job. Uh, also, a great deal of in kind. Come to find out, uh, there's a lot more mountain bikers uh, in this world than I knew, and they they stepped up. And I think about half the Reister is uh, is probably going to wind up riding in the race too. We've got a lot of a lot of dedicated help. Uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield is paying for entry fees for any of their employees that uh, want to ride. Want to ride. Um, I thought you were going to say injuries. Yeah. <laughs> No injury, no. It's not no danger, right? So, well, Mr. Supervisor, you're to be applauded not only for this race, but the years and years of dedication that you've put into open space in this county. You really are. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. So, <laughs> with all these people with graying hair talking about this, right? I'm just wondering if MCSO's helicopter has a patient transport capability. <laughs> Okay, there is public comment on agenda item number one. This
this is not an action item for council. This is information that's provided by the supervisor. Anything? Yes, Kate. Hello there, council people and mayor. Thank you for being here today. So proud to meet you and open up late for you. Just didn't even know who you were, Mr. Big Don. But I just want to say with people that are present here that this is a very obvious economic stimulus brought to you through cycling. Certain people have their clue and certain people do not. And I just want to say in public that this is a huge thing. If the county's on board with this, we all need to come together as a community collectively and come together for all trail users, whether it's bikes or horses or anything. I'll use the soapbox when I can get it. Thank you so much to the county. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other senators to comment? Anything else, Mr. Supervisor? Go to the website. <laughs> all right. A lot of uh, uh, sponsors that I that I missed, and that's probably not what I was supposed to do. But I, we'll see on the twenty third, if not before. Of January. Okay. Thank great. you, Mr. Carden. Are you participating in this? That, that may fine. get my uh, interest up if you are, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kanasik is forcing some of us to work, so I will be there working on that. Thanks again. The second item on the agenda is the council discussion and report by Bambi Miller. <clears throat> trail planner regarding volunteer day, Cape to Cape Trail, and complete the connector trail. Uh, all of them will go to Trails everywhere tonight. Can you guys turn me on? Yes. It's not on. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Um, thank you for this opportunity to present an update on the town of trails. Uh, the report before you tonight includes uh, the status of two town trails, the Gateway Trail and the Connector Trail. I'm going to start with the Gateway Trail. On, uh, on Saturday, October 17th, the weekend after the Tasty Cape Creek, around 60 very enthusiastic trail volunteers came together, including Councilman McGuire, who I don't see her tonight. This was a collective volunteer effort that included the owner of Okanagan Trails Construction Company, Matt Woodson, who donated his equipment and his crews, along with the Desert Widows Mountain Bike Association, organized by Lorraine Montori, President Ernie Weaver, Adrian Goldberg, and many other members of their association, the Cape Cactus Shadows High School mountain bike team. They all arrived in uniforms. It was quite extraordinary to see, actually. And the Cape Creek LDS Church, as well as town citizens and town staff. Those of you are, who are here tonight, I would like you to stand up. Is anybody here? Come on, right. do it. Yeah. On behalf of the Thank you very much. It was a terrific effort. So, Councilman Esser, you'll be happy to know about it. I was going to ask. <laughs> so I want to explain to you where the Cape Creek Trail is and how much we accomplished. Here is Carefree Highway, which is our southern jurisdictional boundary, where the Cape Creek or the Carefree Highway Bridge is. And we completed the trail from on the Water Ranch property from the Carefree Highway all the way up to the, uh, well, we didn't get to do that town property, but there is a trail there currently. And that connects to the BLM property, which then connects to the Cape Creek Regional Park and beyond. This also connects the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Sonora Preserve, sorry, <coughs> which is to the south of the Carefree Highway Bridge, which has a lot of trails. It goes all the way to the parkway I don't, you can't see all of it on this particular map, but um, so during this last rain, we had some of the trail that we built did get damaged, but we're going to repair it within the next two weeks and put signs up so everybody can then use it and know where it's at. So, um, the next trail we have is the connector trail. Recently, council awarded a bid to construct the connector trail which is this trail here. 
goes into the courts trial that was uh, mentioned earlier tonight by Councilman Glenn. I mean, I'm sorry, by Smith. We get confused all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> now, how will be upset about that? I know, right? Um, anyway, the Okanagan Trails Company was awarded this bid, and the trail uh, has been completed. <coughs> it's a very small trail, but it's a very important piece of the trail system, town's trail system. It connects the east side of the town to the west side, and the north side to the south side through the Cape Creek Regional Park. Which you can see, it comes up to here. And that's in the way to here, and actually it's on the way to the Gateway or Trail that we just built. So the trail's already being used daily and has become a very popular trail. So I just wanted to share with you these two additional trails to the town's trail system, which has enhanced the connectivity immensely. And I would be happy to answer any questions Council may have. Question from Council. I just have like that connector trail is really awesome. I mean, it's a nice trail because it, it hooks up with the horse trail up there. And so now you've got smaller loops and you can get down into the mayor's neighborhood and, and Dick's neighborhood down on, on New River Road. And you can actually get into the park easier from there. Because before you had to kind of jockey around up there. And that's that was really a critical trail because now all those trails along Cave Creek Wash. I'm jealous. I haven't even got to hike it yet. I haven't had time. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. It, it, really, it really is nice. One of the many reasons why we live in Cape Cod. Absolutely. So thank you for your effort. Push a note from the council. Okay, there is public comment on the agenda item number two. Okay, anything else, Bradley? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item yeah. number three. And that's discussion regarding drop mitigation and system reliability. And this is the comment. <coughs> On the water Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm pleased to be here representing your Water Advisory Committee. I'm Bill Mattingly. And with me here tonight are a few of my uh, fellow uh, Advisory Committee members. But as we pull up the presentation here, what, uh, what we're going to be talking about here tonight are some items that we talked about back on July 20. I, I spoke to you on July 20 about some opportunities. Uh, council gave us direction to go out and kind of explore some of those opportunities, so I'm here to report on, on our findings. And specifically, we're talking about two items. One is drought mitigation, and, and the other is system reliability. And these are really two uh, separate and distinct things. <clears throat> so, one is a long-term strategy, and the other one is more of a near-term strategy. So the long-term strategy has to do with storing groundwater for ultimate recovery in the future. And there's a couple of opportunities, I'll, I'll talk about that. The other is more reliability, redundancy, uh, and uh, resiliency of the water system. And I'll talk about some opportunities that, that we explored regarding that. So the first one, with respect to drought mitigation, uh, we had a meeting last week, that is, uh, I and uh, David Snow and uh, the uh, town manager met with uh, Dennis Rule, who's the manager of the Central Arizona Groundwater Replenishment District. And I won't say that again, I'm going to say C-A-G-R-D. And what we talked to them about was the, the fact that the town of Cape Creek has an allocation of CAP water of 2,992 acre feet annually, of which we're using about between 2,100 and 2,200 acre feet annually. So there's a portion of that allotment that the town has that we're not currently using. So we're looking for opportunities to use that, perhaps doing some sort of groundwater storage. So how it might work. The Central Arizona Groundwater Replenishment District could store the surplus CAP water on behalf of Cape Creek. And what would happen was the town would approve those credits, and when needed in a drought, when there's shortages on the Colorado River, the CAGRD would remove that water from the ground and deliver that through the Central Arizona Project Canal, and we would take it up our same delivery system to the town. So it provides a little bit of drought mitigation for us. 
and to the degree you can store multiple years of supply there, that provides a, a bit of uh, mitigation for a, a, a drought that might last a, a year or so. The other is involves the uh, the city of Scottsdale, and I had the opportunity to meet with their director there as well as, as well as one of the water resource folks there. Brian Biesemeyer is the director, and the the opportunity was for the town of, or excuse me, the city of Scottsdale to take again a portion of uh, Cave Creek's water supply and actually deliver that directly, treat that at their water plant, deliver it directly to their customers. In exchange, what they would normally be pulling out of the ground, we would keep uh, as long-term storage credits. So we're trading off storage credits for their direct use of that water today for potable use. So they might recharge reclaimed water, and in, in this case, they would deliver CAP water to their customers. Ultimately, we would need to find a recovery mechanism to bring this to the, to the town. There are some constraints there, and we discussed it at our meeting with Scottsdale, and among those are what we all know is our aquifers here in Cape Creek and in Carefree are somewhat limited. Uh, Scottsdale has a number of commitments currently with golf courses in, the, uh, in Carefree, as well as uh, uh, to Carefree itself. And ultimately, you need to recover that water that's in that basin, and then there's limitations on what you can do with respect to withdrawing water one well, well availability and the other is in the capacity so, so there's there's perhaps some limited opportunity here as, as well so in summary before i go on to the reliability and redundancy uh, what i have learned with the long-term opportunities is just that they are long-term there are some impediments to using those today and with respect to cagrd what we learned there is that uh, while there are mechanisms for doing so, there are some constraints, particularly in legislature, uh, which precludes us from using the CAP water for, for storage uh, with our unique circumstances. So until legislation changes, that opportunity is probably not available for us right now. So we need to basically watch and see what happens with respect to long-term storage. So moving on, the uh, re redundancy and reliability is more of a short-term and near-term. This is what I refer to as kind of a belts and suspenders approach for our water delivery here in the town. When I spoke to Scottsdale, what they made me aware of, they've got a water line that's right behind the Walmart. But they're within 500 feet of our water system. So the opportunity to connect the two systems for, two systems for a variety of purposes uh, is is uh, not a difficult thing to do, and they were very open to doing that. Uh, obviously, there's agreements that have to be put in place, and I'll talk about some of those mechanisms later on. Uh, likewise, something like that could be done with the city of Phoenix, and the city of Phoenix, as we know, has got pipelines on the south side of Carefree Highway, we've got pipelines in Carefree Highway. It wouldn't be a difficult thing to find a way to connect those two systems. Those connections could be used in time of need. If we're gonna do a repair where we had to shut down a line, we have disruption or emergency to our supply. They might be uh, useful in that regard. Uh, we might just use them during the summer, during high peak demand to, to help shave our peaks. Or if the price is right, it might be a good thing to do as an on ongoing supplemental supply to the town. So what would be the next things to do? The town needs to work on, this would have to be something that the town staff would work on. It's not thinking that the advisory committee can move forward with, but work on a conceptual understanding between the communities, whether that's uh, Cave Creek and Scottsdale or Cave Creek and Phoenix, uh, work on those conceptual understandings. And I did speak with the director of uh, water for, uh, uh, for Phoenix, uh, that's uh, uh, Catherine Sorensen. She's very open to this kind of thing. I've talked about this kind of thing uh, with her in the past and other circumstances. She's been engaged when she was with uh, uh, Mesa with an arrangement of that sort between Mesa and I think it was the town of Gilbert. So these aren't unique kinds of agreements. You need to do some preliminary feasibility uh, and engineering analysis. And that might be as simple as figuring out what is the pressure in their system versus the pressure in our system. And are they compatible? And if they're not, what would be necessary? Do you need booster pumps? Do you need pressure reducing valves? Things of that sort. It's some level of cost uh, estimate. And then uh, what you need to get from those communities is what it would charge, what they would charge to treat Cape Creek's water, because we're not talking about buying water from them. This is Cape Creek CAP water that they would treat 
we would pay them to treat it, we would pay them to deliver it to the town, and what would the cost be for those, uh, uh, for that service? Ultimately, it's all that's in my mind. I thought one of the big problems with our system was that, that we weren't, didn't have enough water flow that we were treating. And we were negotiating or talking at one point in time uh, to get more water so that we could treat so that we wouldn't have some of the issues with odor and, and, and increase the flow of water in our system. Is that, is that, so I'm, I'm a little concerned about so Vice Mayor, I, I'm, I'm wondering if we're talking about wastewater versus the drinking water system? All right, so you're talking strictly about this is drinking portable water. All right, fine. Right. So, so we're not going to do so. Gotcha. So ultimately, this if you have an agreement that makes sense, this would have to come to the council for approval on the IGA. Uh, you would want to budget for this through an annual budgeting process, so it's a very methodical way of going about it. You understand what it is, you understand what the costs are, you include it in your budget. And then uh, if you choose to do that, then you move forward with final design and construction. So next steps, town staff would lead discussions with these potential uh, uh, agreements with either Scottsdale or Phoenix or both, get some preliminary agreements, develop those cost estimates, and I and my colleagues on the Water Advisory Committee would be happy to work with staff to review those and provide any input. With that, I'll take any questions you may have. I have several, and I'm not going to go into them tonight, but I'm assuming that this is phase two of Desert Bowl. Is there a connection between the two? It is indeed. It's an aspect of it. This is more specifically with respect to Again, drought mitigation, what you do in terms of you, know, you lose the Colorado River supply. And then the other is just as I termed it, belts and suspenders. What happens if something goes wrong with the water system and you need another supply? I've reviewed the code and the ordinance system. It's my intention to put an item on the agenda. Since all of your, your appointed terms will end in December uh, to Kind of get a feel for where we're going. And I had some questions tonight, and I'm not going to really go into that about the IGA and what the staff would do and what you asked the council to One of my main concerns, and I'll give you a hint, is when you have 3,000 acre feet of water to enter into intergovernmental agreements with other entities, particularly the big boys, Phoenix. Starts there and only come away with credits in the event the draft mitigation system is this we have water for 2016, correct? Yes. Everybody did. CAP has said that it's there. I I know from my experience with intergovernmental agreements that when you trade with the big boys, you lose. You can't drink paper. And that's my chief concern. So I'll go into that with you and the committee members, those that choose to pursue being on the water advisory committee. You've indicated that staff would be the leader here. Yes, that would be the leader case. And, and we currently don't have a utility manager, and so we'll see how it falls out. And I'm sure some of these others, Steve, will have some questions. I, I just don't have any questions. Does anybody else have questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Vice Mayor and Council. Is there a public comment on this agenda item? And this is not an action item, it's just a presentation. Is there any public comment? Carry on. Council, any other discussion? I'm not going to this down. Okay. <clears throat> item number four, council discussion of possible direction to the town manager this year again regarding the cost sharing in relation to Cave Creek Carefree uh, Consolidated Court. Now, this was presented by the mayor who is someplace <laughs> He's at the lobby, he must have fallen in, but uh, more than real. Do no, uh, you have a presentation you want to give us first, Peter? From, uh, Staff's perspective on, on the consolidation, where we're at, and your views on that. 
uh, Vice Mayor and Council. Um, actually, you have my memo in the packet from August 11th, and then um, I recent, recently conducted a, a financial review uh, last month looking at FY16 and FY2015. Uh, I'm going to focus on FY2015. Um, if I, just looking at the finances, not looking at operations, my understanding operations were pretty poor a couple of years back and before we entered into the agreement. Our operations and efficiency have improved immensely in the court. So I don't see any fault from that. I think Adrienne, I think the, the, the judge, I think they do a very good job. Now, my concerns was when they put this deal together of this IGA, the numbers that were used by my predecessor, the interim, um, were kind of speculative, kind of. I, I don't think they were on solid ground. So I wanted to take a look at some actual numbers. Uh, the court actually took in revenues of 149,000. They actually had expenses of 200, excuse me, 411,000, and with an operational deficit of 262,000. I think that was expected. But my concern was it's a cost share agreement. Cave Creek uh, last year uh, contributed 181,000 in change, and Carefree uh, administered 80,000, almost 81,000 which leaves Cape Creek paying about 100000 more. Now, there is a transaction to be of about 32000 I don't know what, my understanding is that's to pay for some of the lease of uh, the former court over in uh, Cape Creek. So if you took that out, uh, Cape Creek still paid roughly 68000 more than Cape Creek. And in my mind, in my eyes, it's a cost share agreement, not necessarily that we subsidize Cape Creek. So I, the reason I did that is I just want to see what those numbers were in reality after they, they came out. Also, I looked at, um, if you take a look at court filings, and that's the only report I get from the court. Um, and it can't, doesn't tell you the type of cases, but over the last 18 months, 2015, 2014, um, it's about a Cave Creek takes in or handles about 38% of those court filings. I can't tell the difference between a DWI case and a traffic case and a speeding case. But about 38 percent is toward uh, K3. And even if the more severe cases were uh, from K3, we only spend about an extra $9,000 a year on the prosecutor. So I think it's a little inequity. Uh, my hope was I think it'd be good for the subcommittee of the council to meet with Carefree and take a look at these numbers. I think <clears throat> before there were kind of testaments, now we have some real numbers. I think financially, it's a little unfair for Carefree and uh, we should have a discussion with them. But that's what you folks. My job is to present the information and take a look at what we want to do. Any questions? Council, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I'll go back. Just signaling for you that you're going to go. Let me ask a question first. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm, I'm straight here. I'm going to yeah. boil this down to something I can put my head around. At the bottom line, work generated in Cape Creek accounts for about a third of the caseload, roughly, and we're paying roughly double the deficit costs. Is that correct? In roughly, it's correct. Roughly. I will say that I don't think Cape Carefree know, knew what those exact numbers were when they came to the screen no more than Cape Creek did. Well, but but they, they had the same reports you had. They had the same reports you had. Correct. correct. All my information came from the report. Just, I know you thought that we should get involved with the subcommittee, but and maybe that's kind of, we could agree on that or not. But my other question is what communication have you had with, or I tried to have with Carefree with respect to this seemingly. Uh, I mean, we show them that we're using a third of their time and that we're paying double the expenses. I can understand how they'd see that's a rousing success for carefree, but um, have they been responsive to your inquiries? I, I did have an initial meeting with carefree and I asked for the financial, and it took me a long time to get their financials. I actually had to have them there interview to get the financials to me. So, and I know they wanted to have a meeting at that time with the, uh, the court in Kipri and Cape Creek, but to be honest, I don't want to go to those meetings and not know all my information. Right. So 
now that we've got the information, I think it's a good time to go have that discussion with them. But since they were kind of resistant to me beforehand, I'm not sure sitting down at first blush is going to be productive with just me. So that's why I was hoping if you sign me and a couple of counselors, I think that's a little more. Because, I mean, in the beginning, they did not want to be the fund manager. If I can uh, interject in that helpful way, right. uh, with the town manager, that you're saying is correct, and I got <coughs> carefree to be forthcoming with their financials. And then they, about two and a half months ago, they invited me for a meeting, and I misunderstood the nature of the meeting, so I'm late. And they not only had a full complement of carefree, they were thinking more people were coming in. They not only had a full complement of carefree people, but people from the Superior Court were there and all of that. And uh, they made a presentation, and uh, the town manager wanted to present this tonight, and I think the next step is either do a subcommittee to go up or have Carefree come down and present everything mm -hmm. I heard. There were a couple things in their financial presentation that uh, uh, caused me to do a, a say what in my mind uh, as, as to certain financial raises. And I feel that the entire council should hear it. So can I do it via a subcommittee and then go from there or just have the Carefree people come down and make the same presentation to the council that they did to me. Well, I guess when we, when we come back, we can discuss. Is there any other questions of, of, of the town manager on this? Only the, the, the playing field is not left. Yeah, that's well, a rhetorical question. I, I, my, my question really is to Bill with regards to attaining the contract. And, and I was always under the impression that we could enter in from one council to another into a long-term tenure contract. And when I made that statement to their town administrator, he said Carefree would never have entered in, I mean, yeah, Carefree would never have entered into any kind of a deal unless they knew it was for 10 years or more. <coughs> um, one of my other concerns was when it was written up, this council has no authority. It, it, it lives here, it breathes here, we clean it here, we take care of it here, and um, their council is in charge of everything. Nothing comes to us. So my question will go back, which is, can you enter into a 10-year continuous contract like that? Mr. Mayor, it's not member of Clancy. You can enter into a 10-year agreement, but you can not appropriate your year. So the way you get out is not appropriation. But I haven't seen this, this IGA. When I saw this on the agenda, I asked, I called Peter and he said, the premature to take a look at it. Well, I think he wants to give your guidance. The bottom line is, governments do enter into multi year agreements, but you do have, you usually have, and I'll bet you this document has an appropriations out, which would give you an out every year. But I haven't seen the agreement. Well, let me, let me follow up on that. Uh, the, 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 Peter, Peter? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I know you're handling Mr. Sims an agreement now, Mr. Sims. I don't know. I was going to go to him for a question about have you reviewed the agreement? So make sure he gets a copy and make sure we communicate with him however we can so that when we do have this meeting, whether it's here or or there, that uh, we have Mr. Sims up to speed on our behalf. I also gave him the, uh, the memo on the former prosecutor that he gave to the town at the IGA and that. Um, I can give them a financial, but that's probably the week going at it. You want to go to that. And then there's a, that's the PowerPoint presentation. From back when Rodney Glassman gave it to the council way back there. Uh, and I, the only reason it's in there, I think it shows some of the shakiness of the, of the assumptions. Yeah, the assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mayor, yes, kind of agree, these kinds of agreements are really good agreements. I've seen governments. Mm -hmm around the state and you're into these agreements to try to save money. The question is, uh, you need to look at it to see if it meets your needs. Okay, well the question here is so that it moves forward for council, and I says they won't move forward. Uh, do, do you do a subcommittee, or do I just invite the care free council down, uh, give them time for council to read the, this council to read the agreement, and have them present to the entire council, as the mayor want. I, I, my gut tells me that we do a subcommittee with the town lawyer there and the town manager. We get down and dirty and 
at the conference, you could really try to hammer this out, and, and you know, the eye to eye, across the table, all up to speed, because it seems on its face to be unfair, uh, period. Uh, so, and I know Council Bunch has raised issues about this before, and has spoke about that. Um, so, I would try that first, and if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll public and, and have them come down and they can explain, and then we'll know exactly what, because I'm hoping that if it's this way that we can come to some kind of agreement that we don't have to go public. Council Mayor, if you formally constitute a subcommittee, it would be subject to the open meeting law, and you have to hold meetings in public. What, what most governments have done, yeah. see, Supervisor Vanasek back when we did the ballpark, they appointed two supervisors to, to attend the meetings with Mr. Hines, well, not as a subcommittee, but just as representative of them before the supervisors, so they didn't create an open meeting. Okay, well, we can invite the Care Free Council to meet with the subcommittee here and post them as a public meeting. Certainly. Sure. Maybe the public and the press can, can cover the meeting. Yeah, but just not a, not a council meeting. We can do that. No, 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 that's not what you're saying. No, I don't know. If you choose a subcommittee formally, that requires an open meeting. No, I know I understand that, but you're, you're referencing the subcommittee to do the meeting as a subcommittee, which is publicly uh, uh, noticed yes. as a meeting. Okay. If you go that route, the other alternative would be two of you could meet, and it wouldn't be a public meeting. Right. I think Mr. Bunch was first, and then Mr. Bunch had some Yes, I am. sorry. You had it back. I'm <laughs> great. Yeah. Yeah. My gut feeling is anytime you go to negotiations that you're better off not uh, uh, broadcasting to everyone what you're doing because you can lose some uh, advantages. I think you're better off with the two person um, just showing up as, as, as part of the thing as, as Mr. Sims has suggested. So, yeah. uh, I have a question for the mayor. Vincent, can you share with us the purpose as our representative for the Superior Court being here? Uh, I was not aware who. I thought I was just meeting with the care free mayor and uh, Gary Neese, which is the, not the general manager, the town manager of the care free. But all these people were there, and it uh, it uh, it made the care free mayor uncomfortable. So he actually left the meeting. So I was there with all of these people. The people from the superior court were there more to say from their perspective how well this arrangement works. Well, that, that, that's fine. That, that, that's all right. But I don't think council's concern is so much with how well it works or how it um, is viewed in favor of the light by the superior court as much as the financial arrangement of the agreement. Uh, some of the uh, concerns or apprehensions we had about this arrangement that Cape Creek citizens would somehow be treated unfairly in a court, uh, a carefree court, even though it's uh, located in, in Cape Creek, those things have never come to pass. I've never heard any complaints about that sort of thing. But council's concern has uh, remained, and from what I hear this evening, <coughs> questions are not uh, need to be answered <coughs> as to the financial arrangement between the two towns regarding this agreement. If I may make a suggestion, if it's all right, the vice mayor and I will meet. If that's all right with the, I guess, the council? Yes. Was there any discussion of the financial situation? Yes, at that meeting. Yes. And, and do they deny uh, that? I, 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 no. No. The, the, yeah, I, I don't want to go too far uh, <coughs> out of the mouth, but I, I think I'm with the sense that's on the agenda. The one thing that caught my attention was they explained very clearly why the financial arrangement was the way it was. But, uh, there were two things that caught my attention. One was, as part of the agreement, they had to vacate a building which they still had a lease on, which we are paying for. Or in some, some portion of what we contribute is going toward that, and that was part of the agreement. And I was on the council that approved the agreement, so, and I, I don't remember if I voted for it, I didn't, but that is part of the agreement. That, that was one of the things that caught my attention. Uh, there was some other financial 
arrangement that um, uh, made me scratch my head. Again, I, I did speak up because I, I felt, well, there's, this, there's been a miscommunication about what this meeting was supposed to be because they were expecting a delegation of Cave Creek people to come up there. And when it was just me, they, they kind of, well, gee, this is a fairness. I can advise, well, you're not going to beat me up. Just sit down and start talking. Well, uh, another point. So, if, if that's okay, the, the subcommittee to me and the vice mayor to have the care of people down here and give me. There would be two appointees. It wouldn't be a subcommittee. You would be appointees. Uh, appointees. Would be appointees. I, I, to follow up on the question, at the outset, apparently our town manager had difficulty getting the information. That's correct. Uh, that was resolved at the phone call. No, and, and I guess the other thing that, that I'm, well, you know, I've got a lot of concerns. They're not the major concern. I wanted to make sure that, you know, the ball had been as we got here. And I want to thank you publicly for looking into this and getting to the bottom of it because we've heard uh, a lot of talk lately about what a wonderful success story this is. And it may be from an operation standpoint, but financially, I don't think it's what we anticipated financially. I want to thank you for getting to the bottom of it and getting the mayor involved when you couldn't so that you could get those numbers. What, what I will do tomorrow is check with Barbara um, here in Town Hall because I do believe that everything they gave me, I gave her to put on the file. So we have it here at Town Hall. Now, that being said, even after Steve and I meet, I still think that this should at some point be presented to the entire council. That was my question. Yeah. Next steps. So, yeah. yeah, I don't think it stops with Stephen or with the vice mayor. No, it's not that we do not trust you. No, it's, it's no, 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 no. We know you trust us, but it, 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 I, it my, my whole trust is every the entire council should be informed of this because it's. Uh, uh, yes, there was another council that took this action, but this council is affected by that action. And, 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 and we have a very bright attorney that represents us now, and I can tell you that if you have taxation without representation, uh, there's a little history in this country about you know, uh, 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 rebelling uh, under those circumstances. So if we caught the short end of the deal uh, because folks wanted to portray some big success, and it really is the short end of the deal, and if it's not fair going forward, then we need to make it fair. And if they're not willing to make it fair, then we can take whatever action we think our citizens deserve. So, Mayor, and, and uh, you would be reporting back to the, to the council at a council meeting or in, in some other format? Well, I, I think after the vice mayor and I are done, certainly report back, but even following the report, I still feel that it should be presented to the entire council. Well, it was right. well yeah, I, I don't feel it should just stop with the vice mayor. And I, even if the vice mayor is, okay, comes out and says, yeah, I'm totally satisfied. No, I still feel that the entire council should hear this at some point. Is this a good step that the vice mayor and I uh, bring them in and, and begin a more uh, uh, a different type of discussion with them. Yes, I think there is value to that uh, because they're certainly going to see after that meeting uh, our predisposition of how we were going to report back to our council uh, about this. Uh, Mr. Neese was the one who did 99% of the talking. Everyone else, and I mean, there was a room full of people, uh, said, oh, which is fine. He was up on everything, but again, um, after the vice after the vice mayor and I meet, but then the town manager and our attorney, then I think this has to come to the full full council. We all have a stake in this. All the people of Cave Creek have a stake in this. You all, as representatives, have a stake in this. And there are going to be action items coming out of those meetings, unless there's just total accord. But gee, this isn't fair. We're going to pull that stake to the ground. Well, I'd like to make a comment. I have attended three pre-trials and sat here and watched the process. And um, I can tell you that it's not town people coming through. It's a, a very mixed group. Um, when you see a pre-trial, there's a lot of negotiation, as you probably know. 
and uh, so on and so forth, but it's, it's, it's not town people that I know. And then I asked the bailiff at that one point, um, what happens during traffic court? Is it worth me coming back to observe? And he says, well, on any given day when they have that, there's only one or two people that show up. So really what we're seeing is a lot of pretrial um, things. People coming from jail are coming in. They're not in our communities. So I find it interesting that, and that most of that's coming here free. So I think we all were very interested in seeing the light shed on this issue. And I'd be the first one to uh, put forth that I recognize the separation between uh, uh, roles. We are the legislative branch, this is the judicial branch. But this is a different flavor thing. That is, two municipalities came together to bring this about. Therefore, the council has a role, a voice, and a final say. No, it's a good say there. This has nothing to do with the court as its operation is before the staff. Nothing no. to do with that. It's just the IJ between the two town operations work, I think the finances work. But this question is very quick for the entry. Okay, if you would sign up on a meeting to this. Um, yes, Thursdays and Fridays in the future are, are good for me. Uh, there is public comment on this. Thing. I mean, right? I mean, right, Cape Creek resident. Good evening, Mayor and Council. There is a lot of information and misinformation going around about the Cape Creek Court, the consolidated court. Town Manager Peter Jankowski recently said that this were a true cost shared agreement and the court's total expenses were evenly split. Cape Creek would have approximately $40,000 left over. He is inaccurate. Let's look at the facts. The IGA was designed and negotiated as a cost-sharing agreement, and it is, has accomplished exactly what it was designed to do. The court's total expenses for the FY 14 and 15 are $401,165, with Hay Creek paying $205,000 $830 and care free paying $205,332. That's a 50 50 split. K Creek required that the consolidated court operate within the K Creek court facilities. In order to facilitate K Creek's desire to maintain the court's presence in the K Creek court agreed to assume all financial responsibility associated with the carefree court's lease until the lease expires in July 2016. That's in six, 10 months. Jankowski wrongly includes this transition fee in his analysis of the operation of the court, distorting the picture. Another important consideration that has not been mentioned is to look at the prosecutor's caseload this time. K Creek cases, 58% of the time, has, and Cal State approximately $36,590. Carefree cases, 42% of the time, with a cost of about $26,860. It is legally more time consuming to do K Creek cases than carefree cases. Why? Because of the nature of the cases. Carefree is mostly traffic tickets. K Creek is bar fights, DUIs, disorderly conduct, all of which are very labor intensive for the court. K Creek and carefree then have actually a very different approach. Finally, and most important, and please listen to this. For the first time since 1997, our court is operating efficiently and in accordance with Arizona law. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be on this to open on this issue. Can we go back to council for further discussion? Again, no action is being taken on that. Yes, Well, I'm not sure I should make this comment, but I will anyway. I heard the rumor on the street when the last speaker just confirmed that Carefree is a speed trap. <laughs> There's a real imbalance in the bottom line of what we're paying and the services we're using on over on when you look at the big picture. We need to get that worked out really well. If reasonable people can't work that out so that it's more fair to both cities, both towns, excuse me, then you know, we'll take whatever action we need to take on behalf of the people. But I, I do kind of find it interesting that some are, I guess, arguing on behalf of disparity in favor of carefree here before us. It, it's tough. I'm not warming to that argument, but I suppose others are. So that's my observation. Okay, council will proceed to number five, the last of the agenda items. Council discussion and recommendation of the city of Brooklyn regarding the number seven here in the mine for a liquor license for lunch and the amount of our funds. Yeah, let me see. Um, also, the uh, liquor license application has been posted for the required uh, 20 day period on the uh, Orange and Mary Golf Club property. They're splitting out their um, liquor license uh, for the golf club. Uh, and uh, we received no uh, comments in favor of or opposed to it. Uh, staff had no uh, comments one way or the other. Um, the, Agent for them, Andrea Rigoretz, the attorney, is in the audience. If you have any questions for her, as well as Dale Samar uh, representing the Ranch Manana Golf Club. But uh, staff is recommending that you recommend approval to the State Liquor Board regarding this uh, number seven here in line. Questions from Council? Anything from the applicant? Does the applicant wish to speak? Or? Only if there are questions. <coughs> no, apparently, there are no questions. There is public comment on the item number five. No. Okay, that's very much. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to move to uh, recommend approval for the State Liquor Board uh, regarding uh, the number seven beer and wine bar for a uh, ranch and the amount of golf club requested by their agent, Andrea Lukowitz. The second. Motion made the second, right there. This was business, your great business to him on. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to more of the angry age offer. It's only bad to win. There's nothing else from council. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes to the pilot. Thank you, council. Um, before I ask for adjournment, um, town management staff can be sure not not this Thursday I'm tied up, but Thursday and Fridays and make sure it's convenient to be there. Um, tomorrow, please have Marshall Stein call C.J. Carden, the head of Maricopa County Parks and Recreation. When I was out on the course, there was quite a few details that needed to be worked out uh, between Spur Cross and the traffic control to get people, uh, bicyclists in the town. And uh, we're already in November. Uh, town clerk for the next meeting, uh, which is November 16th, double executive sessions. The first one starting at 4.30, which is a continuation of the town manager performance review. The second starting at 6 o'clock with uh, Steve Betts. Motion to adjourn, council. So move. Thank you, council. Yes. 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 Yes.